if it works. Yeah, you know, I got 10,000 people who are going to be watching. That's all right. That's all right. Me and him have, uh, have had uh, uh, shows on about our uh, about fish health. Doing the, doing about, talking okay. about tank transfer and all okay. kinds of fish. Because uh, Bobby's good with, uh, with uh, the fish. Well, if they're healthy or not, I'm the fish disease. Oh yeah, that's his. Well, it's, it's, it's his in the hobby. You know, everybody has a different go on uh, thing. The hobby Uh, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to. The fish disease form. I'm humble fish. He's okay. humble fish. He's on reef stories. Oh, so you're one of the main guys. Let me see this if it's is working. Fish. Let me see if it's working. We got 50 people are starting to follow in now. I just started it. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, everybody? Live stream. We got Ed. Bobby. 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 He's my local reef. Reef Club guys, I don't know if it's working. <laughs> hey, Little Marina Crab Society, LAMS. There you and go. We're, in, uh, we're gonna do a, a thing about uh, using the par meter on uh, CJ's tank here and uh, see what his lights are doing. If we had to adjust anything so he knows where everything's at, yes, sir. We want to get a uh, because uh, I know they're, they're turned down right now. Well, yeah, we want to. We want to. What you want to do when you do a par meter. When you do a par meter, the best thing to do is to uh, get you a piece of paper, the size square, the size of your tank, and maybe just a little bit of a aquascape, kind of a rough aquascape, so that way you can uh, something like this. Yeah, so you can kind of see where everything's at. You can see how everything's going on in the tank, and kind of write down numbers as we uh, as we do it. This is a uh, the stick. I'm gonna get it un untangled. Is that, is that the epigee, uh, epigee, uh This is an epigee, uh This is the 200. I haven't got the newer model yet. This is the, the old 200 model. Okay. I'm gonna. I haven't had a chance to buy the new one yet. I want to buy the new one here. It's uh, get an extra pen for him to draw. On, right? Sure. Give him something to draw. Yeah, his son. He's got to get his son something to draw with. <laughs> Keep my so we don't. Don't have too much stuff going on yeah, here. That's my little nano. That's my nano project over there. I got your gold strike room. Yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, here, 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 here. You wanna draw? Look, look. I'm un untangling my draw. At our club, we have uh, when we have uh, meetings every once a month, or we uh, always take this with me to uh, check everybody's tank out. We take this is one of our little things we do. Was we always check everybody's lights out so that they know what's going on and that kind of thing. The deal, hey, everybody, give a thumbs up if you can hear. We got some people, somebody here from Germany, saying hello from Germany, Mr. Reefer. So, hello. <laughs> All right. Hello, Germany. I have friends in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> lights are really, really low right now. I see what we're just see what we're getting. Okay. We're gonna try the very bottom down here. And we're at smooth. Look at us. This, this is how low it is. 38. 38, 37 par at the bottom right now. See? Yeah. The lights are only on like 10%. Yeah, that's a 10%. Let's just see what we got. Let's just see a little stair step. See what I've got. Try to keep it kind of pretty. They're like at 80. Let's see if I can get up high enough. Okay. So here you're at 90. Drawing a picture? Good job, this man. Is, uh, I think he's getting like about, I would say 80, 85 to 90 at the top of this rock right here. Now that, that, that's a good, this would be good lighting for, I would say for um, LPS, a lot of LPSs and uh, solas and stuff like that, 80 to 90. So we would, but we would really like to have 80 to 90. At the bottom. At the bottom, bottom here, and we only got 35. Yeah. So that's, you know, I will, I will want 90 down here, and maybe 100 here, and then maybe up at the very top of this rock for okay. for you. What the, what kind of cores are you plan on keeping, CJ? In this mix. Track? We're going to be mixed reef. So okay, mixed got, reef. What do you think I got about? assessed on the SPS along the top ridges, okay. where the most flow in the light's going right. to be pretty much from here up. SPS zone and then mix kind of lower uh -huh. flow over right. here and LPS. You know, you, know, you can get out of like uh, hammers and stuff. They'll, they'll like, they love between 40 and 80. 
yeah. par. That's that's their favorite par. And so um, you want to get that. If we can get these numbers up a little bit below down the bottom here, we'll be fine. So he's going to start adjusting it. We're going to start cranking it up. I got a couple of people that uh, I talk to pretty often. Uh -huh. These same lights, SBS 30 year guys, you know, uh -huh. 30 year guys. Um, he said the spectrum that he's had the most success with. This what you got set up? Uh, no, not right now. This is this is just on just for. Uh, which one? These are great cheap fixtures. Everybody in the group club doesn't really know about them. It's Ocean Revive lights. Mm -hmm. I've that's seen them in practice. All right, so that's the blue. Uh -huh. So if I turn the lights up to around. Uh, so we're already up to 90, 100, right over 100 now. See where we were, 35. So 35, so that's 90% blue, 35% white. So this is, it's, it's, see what it 100. is. 100. See how it jumped up 70% yeah. just oh, right yeah. there. No doubt. Hey, honey. Wife's home. We never knew on the red leaf out. She blocked it. That's fine. All right. So let me write that down. Let's let me jot that down. That's on the sand bed. Yep. That's on the sand bed on this side. Let's walk all around this to make sure. Sometimes, see, like you drop down underneath that rock there. That's dropped it down to 50. Yep. 59. So 100 on the sand bed. On that, on the right hand side. Those are still low. I haven't adjusted that side. That side. See, that's 46. Yep. 46, see how much difference it made? Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, so that's kind of what you know. Look at that. 17 back there. Wow. Back here is 17 and 6, back behind this corner here. So let me know exactly, exactly where I'm going to be able to do what. Right. You can, like, actually, every little part of the tank you can. Right, you want to kind of map out so you mm -hmm. can actually put your corals where they go. A lot of times I'll use this when I'm just putting the core. I have a certain spot. You know what? What I always get, you know, I always find the. When I, I'm, I'm an SBS guy. I've had them SBS since 1990. So you've been, how long have you been? And I'm just curious, how long have you guys been in the hobby? I've you been in the been hobby been? since uh, 1980. 80? That's 25, 30 years. I'm 31. <laughs> I was born 85, so. Yes, almost 40 years. Yes. <laughs> I've, been, I've been keeping aquariums since I was uh, 10 years old. I thought I'd be 64. Man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I, I always tell people, you say, I've, I've, I've made every mistake you can make. Help people with my, learning different problems and different mistakes they've had. So if you see me on Reef to Reef, I'm a Reef Wiser on Reef to Reef. And uh, so I usually go around and answer people's questions and stuff. Maybe because I've I've started out in the hobby uh, a long time ago, and, and so I uh, I do uh, I kept SBS since the very first good very good friend of mine is Steve Tyree. You know Steve Tyree Tyree Corals Tyree this Tyree that. He's a good buddy of mine. He comes to my house at least once a year. Stays in my house, and uh, uh, so you know I've been keeping them forever. And uh, you learn something. I learn something new every. Every day I'm with <coughs> corals, I learn something new. Uh -oh. So it's, that's what, well, to me, getting a hobby is learning about things. You know what I mean? You learn about things so much. You know, there's, there's always something new to learn. <laughs> this is my if, you like, if you like to learn things, it's, it's, that's what the hobby's for. This is four or four years for me. This is my uh -huh. third tank, so this is my biggest. That's, that's a nice thing. Big Example in the back here. In the back of this, back by this corner here, we're we're still about a hundred. Yeah, yeah. We're still hundred bed on this side. Yep. So we're going to go up. Now we're going to go up to like the upper on this side. Yep. Right there is a hundred and twenty. Sorry, you gotta watch the waves make it go up. Now I'll say a hundred and twenty-five. I'll okay. say. Your, the the uh, par meter will get a move with the light with all this water moving, yep. which is good. Yeah, surface agitation brightens it down a little bit. Right here, we're at right at uh, 205. Yep. Okay. And back here, we're at probably the same one. Two <coughs> ten, say. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Then we're going to try to get up here to. Oops. Oh, 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 get oh, toys. Right. Oh, oh. You're all right, man. I'm telling you. 
<laughs> his toys are his big band toys is what it is. <laughs> that's all right. Look, okay. he's quiet. I'm happy. <laughs> that's right. And this one right here is that this is uh looks like it's two fifty six. Two fifty six on top? Right, that's on top. All right. What am I getting at the surface right there, like the water surface? That water surface there is it right at it's uh right at three hundred. Three hundred at the surface. Right. right. Which is good. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. Let's go keep most of your corals. Yeah. So now we got this side map, right? We got to see what this. How many million are there back in this corner? That's one twenty-five. So it's a little bit off the bottom. So. All right. Any place okay. else on this side? Uh, we can well, go? all of this right here is basically one twenty in this area. All right there. Yeah. yeah. This thing has a battery right. thing where it goes off all the way. Oh, that's one one fifty right there. One fifty part. That's just maybe yeah. getting overlap. Maybe could be. Could be. Okay. I try to always keep the the par meter straight up and down. You want to keep the par meter straight up and down so it's getting straight light. Well, not a, if you can't cock it, you cock it'll change a little bit. Where the, where the bronze are coming out with that brown patch is. No yeah. sure. That's uh one sixty. One sixty. It's crazy how much higher it is over here. Yeah. Right there. It doesn't make it almost don't make sense. <laughs> I know. It. Well, you know, a lot of times it's just the area where the lights are and then the water agitation. The water agitation changes the uh the par a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Good so deal. now we gotta do the other side. Good deal. All right. And we got the lights on this side set yep. up already. Yep. Okay. It should be at 90, they had 90 blue, 35 percent white. That's These lights are pretty powerful. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, down in this front area here, we're at uh, 123. Okay. okay, then we'll move up a little bit on this yep. lot. And that's at uh, 140. Okay. And then we go up to this spot. Yep. And we're at 205. 205. Yep. Okay. This spot, yeah, that's gonna be definitely SPS on that ledge. I hope no, that's right. it right at uh 199. 199. Mm -hmm. right. And then we'll go over here, yeah. And we're going over there. Let's get right around 150. 150. Isn't that amazing how this a little bit of movement from right. one to the other? That's what you have to watch sometimes. Thank you, thank you, think it's my spread. Something else I did trying to help my spread. Uh -huh. I put these on drill, drill right. slides. Uh -huh. So you can move them a little yeah. bit. Let's see, yeah. what, let's see what happens. Let's turn them on. You want to move them a little bit. Move them to the left, to the right. Oh, that's a big difference. Look at that overlap. Change. See how it changes? Look that's at a that. huge difference. Man. Like, it moves it back and forth. Man. Again. I'll tell you It's what. good for you to know what you're yeah. you see this so you can see what it's doing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'll tell you what, overlap is a serious thing. Yeah. It, it can make a big difference in it, huh? Okay. So that's we got that, and we got to go back up here. We're gonna try to get this yep. back spot up here. There you go. We'll try the one we'll right there. Let's see, we'll see, we'll see if I can see if we can get that. Well, this is all gonna be in the video I do. Okay. I can actually, do a update video. Right. Yeah. Okay. This one's showing. This one's showing two fifty. Okay. It's right on the tip of that ledge. Mm -hmm. So that'd be good SPS right there. Mm -hmm. we'll move back here if I get this. And that's uh. That would show in right about 260. 260. Okay, so that's pretty, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. We'll travel right here. And that's uh, 240. And so we got all that up there. We're going to go. We're going to try to get these last two cops. I get at you, so you can get a better angle on it. We're going to try to go on this side now. Okay. Let me see. Hey, see what's up? There? What's up, everybody? Um, 76 people watching right now. 76 hey people. Hey, I'm going to come back and check for questions here in a second after I get done writing this down. All right. Okay. I'm sure people want to get some of your sauce, man. 40-year-old okay. sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one is a 250. It's a very top, almost at the very top. This uh, this one is two forty. I mean 140. 140. 140. All right. You have to watch me. Sometimes I get dyslexic. <laughs> That's all right. I got and, you. 
And then we're going down to here. It's making, it's making sense as it's trending down. Yeah. This one here is, uh, let me watch it. We're going to say that's 139. 139. Hey guys, watch out. These fish don't like this stuff. <laughs> yeah. they, don't, they don't like when you're doing all this stuff. My Man. fish go nutsy. Man. Well, look at boy, that's, that. That's a bad spot. That's really low. I mean, you put like a spot like underneath that left bridge, right? It's dead. Zero. Zero? I mean, that three. is zero. Wow. So <laughs> I'm about to make sure I slide that out. A yeah, little I would bit slide more. it out right about yeah. here because you yeah. get like about 80. 80. So I get about 80 on that rock. If you move it out underneath that rock, yeah. you're going to get better because you want to use that for anything. Yeah. Zero is not a good thing for corals. <laughs> so that one, one thing I can tell you you put there would be like sun corals. Yeah. But the problem I've had with sun corals, they're a pain in the butt. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. synthetic thing. Oh, they just more and they and they cause you put so much uh, stuff to try to keep them alive yeah. in your tank. I mean, you call you cause all kinds of hair allergy and cyanobacteria, all kinds of stuff in your tank. So if you see a guy that has a good, uh, there's a guy on Reef to Reef that has a good uh, sun coral tank. He has a very good system of feeding because it's a very it can really mess, especially we're trying to keep other things that are just other than those. I mean. It's they're a good thing to have, but when I tried them, it was just like pollute my tank. <laughs> you know? Okay, so this one here, like in this, like in this area, yeah. we'll go down to the bottom here since you're gonna move this one. Okay. This is a this is a, at a ninety. Okay. Yeah. Area. So I, yeah, I, I am curious what I'm getting like on the sand bed, like away from like around yeah. the, around the edges. You know, right in this corner here, you're at seventy. Okay. Okay. We're going back this way. We get we're at seven sixty five, okay. and back over here we're at the yes. Let me turn back. This thing has a, a the, the one thing with that, but he always drives me it nuts. Times it, yeah. it times out. Mm -hmm. get this is sixty right now. Still getting sixty back there. Yeah, back to back. I don't, I don't know what I would put back there, but it's good to yeah. Know. Well, I mean, <laughs> you put, the lip. yeah, you put. I, Friends of mine puts a lot of. You think, you think the Euro brace? I thought the Euro brace would would shadow a little. I kill yeah, some of the little shadow them like, like a little bit. A little bit, yeah. It's that's sixty six, and then like right here it's. Well, of course I'm getting I'm getting blocked by this slide, yeah. this corner here. Yeah. And uh, that's sixty. It's around sixty seventy right that's seventy good. right there. That's not bad. That's not yeah. bad. So, so anything else we need to check uh, out in there? Well, I tell you what, I'm curious because okay. these numbers seem like they solid. Okay. If we turn the whites up a little bit more, I'm wondering if, if we even need to. Yeah. I think that's pretty solid across the board because that's pretty much where we're at. Right. That looks good. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, really, white light is more of a uh, for you. Yeah. That's what I tell people. Okay. Uh, most of the spectrum you're on, the corals do good with is a bluer spectrum yep. light. That's what we found over the years. It is too much. Well, if you look in the ocean, you know, most of it's all blue. I mean, uh, like this uh, peppermint angel I got mm -hmm. on my shirt, that, that fish is that color because when in nature it's in so deep of water that you can't even see it. Man. You can't even see the fishes because it's all blue lights. That's it's the the blue. You can't see the red. So we get up the night. It's like a lot of fish you see are really colorful. The reason why they're colorful that way is because all the blue light. And they're under mostly under blue. Mm -hmm. And they have to have some kind of markings that come out, and uh, like that red, the, the flame angel yep. in the ocean is almost invisible because it's so dark. Right. It's, it, that red will turn it almost like a black fish. Yeah. You wouldn't even see it. That's, um, good. That's good to know. I'll tell you what. From everything I, we've talked to, I hang out with a whole bunch of guys on live stream uh -huh. and stuff. But they we been talking about spectrum down that topic of spectrum. And it was uh -huh. good to know. He, uh, I seen the chart where they showed me these LEDs and the wavelengths and the blue and the. Five four hundred something out of the range or whatever it was. So this is where they had it, and now I see why the blues turned up higher. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's your blue spectrum is better. A good friend of mine is Tulio uh, the the of of uh, Reef Brights. And uh, Reef Bright guy. Okay. yeah, Tulio, and uh, he is uh, he's doing a talk at Magna this year, just on lighting and on uh, dealing with. Uh, Drums and uh, of course, uh, Tulio was the person uh, that brought uh, LEDs to the hobby. Wow! And uh, he's a he's a, a lighting engineer for it's his real job as a light engineer, but his rights are his hobby business. Yes. 
uh, he actually does lighting for, for uh, big companies. And uh, so the, the reap rights are his kind of hobby business because he likes aquariums. Tulio's been in the hobby as long as I have. And uh, we always talk about lights at the. Uh, did he give you uh, did he give you any secrets to the sauce on reap rights? The Spectre and everything. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bobby saw my reef rights. Yeah, you got some on your side. What kind of yeah. stuff? I got a. I, right now, I have a forty-gallon uh, innovative marine, mm -hmm. all in one, like your JBJ you had. Yeah. You know, I used to be in that corner over there. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. In that corner. Not my favorite tank, but I'm not a big. Uh, the reason why I have that tank now, when we moved into our, we live in a patio home, mm -hmm. and before that, I had a basement, and uh, I had three thousand gallons of uh, SPS in my basement <laughs> before and then when we moved in this house my wife said the biggest tank you can get right now is a 40 gallon because she didn't want to be being down in the basement all day yeah. you know I got, a basement, I, had, I got a big place down there I cook on this thing yeah well, I, well I, <laughs> I would get I get I've been in a hobby so long and people know me uh mm -hmm. in other parent, pet stores do so if they had an aquarium that somebody would want to get rid of yeah. They would they would call me up and I'd come get it yeah. and I'd just fill it up you know I said well I'd give me more space you free know tank. Yeah, a free tank is where I looked at it so I always had these big tanks and I gave them all away when I had a five hundred gallon mm -hmm. RO unit okay. tank from work I had a five hundred gallon RO tank I had and my wife was nuts she said, you're crazy keeping all this stuff for me yeah. you don't have any place in a patio home it took a lot of negotiating get I know moving <laughs> up to this from the, I know from the JV, JV, JV was, you know, right it's, it's a little bitty yeah but yeah. Uh, I got a, I get a lot of that stuff. So let anybody let got any questions? Let me see. Uh, before they ask, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you got anything you want to tell us about the fish? And then after no, you're done, I'll, I'll, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll right. open the questions up. Yeah, after you're done, check them out. Anything you want to look for, I'll, 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 I'll let people win. Cool fish from Reef to Reef. Uh, reef to Reef fish disease form. Um, fish look good to me. Um, I don't see anything really wrong. It's like your rest is getting beat up by somebody, but I don't know. See the little yeah, the furry rats. Yeah, maybe there's a female uh, Melanaris rat I saw in here, but uh, so that is, a, that is a female then, because yeah, I was wondering if it was female or male. Yeah, it's a female. The Melanaris rat, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a female. So you could try to put a like a male, the more colorful yeah. one. Yeah, the more colorful, yeah, the, the larger. Blue, yeah, um, I'm trying. To yeah, yeah, you know what? I I, get, I only deal with fish from uh, aquatic. So it's close home. to me. He always looks me up with good fish, and I know you know I'm. I don't quarantine, don't beat me up. You know, I haven't <laughs> quarantined, but I've never had issues getting fish from him and having problems in my tanks. Well, the so, powder blue tang would be your, we tell you. Yeah. Because they're, they're, you can have acre velvet. I mean, they have almost no slime coat. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the fish to tell you if you've got parasites or something wrong mm -hmm. in the tank. So as long as the powder blue looks good, you're probably good. Yeah, that's, the, that's the sign. So I'm wondering, because I heard a lot of people in the hobby have probably powder blue. They go through many, many, many of them. They always die. This is my this is my first time. It's my first powder blue, and I'm either really lucky, mm -hmm. or I did something different. Is there anything any value to blue to a new system as opposed to adding it to an established system that may already have those diseases? Is there any correlation to that? You know, um, I'm, I'm wondering. Not from a disease standpoint, powder blues went as. He'll get more aggressive, and it'll be more difficult to put new fish right. in because he's. This is going to be his tank. Right. So I tell people if they want a powder blue, sometimes it's best to add them last. Yeah. That way, they're the newcomer and they're not already established to the tank and okay. and cause problems or something. So when they're small like that, as he gets bigger and bigger and bigger, they just get more aggressive, more territorial. It's just especially with other tanks, it's hard to, to yeah. mix and match them, you know. I got I got some big like crazy plans for this man. Overstocking, <laughs> like I don't know if you said since I see my filtration, like I built it, uh, customized my sump. Okay. From SEA, I redid all the baffles. There's a lot of come on. There it goes. Uh, let me turn it on to where it's not. I need to get some real lights on here, really. But uh, yeah. But I pretty much just built my baffles in a way to where I don't have to have, to have filter socks. You can also put the cloth. I can replace it. Skimmers, algae scrubbers. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. Mm -hmm. yep. Santa Monica, this thing is crazy. Oh, yeah. and every week, it's almost time over. But I've been getting crazy growth out of this. I cycle your nitrates and phosphates now. I cycled this tank with Draculani. I didn't uh, 
bleach it, you know, acidated or anything. Mm -hmm. Just let it do its thing. You can add fish, you can add anything. Fishless, foodless cycle for like yeah. seven weeks. Okay. Then I added the fish in there, had a little hair algae bloom, clean the hair algae off. That's it. Just, just running the algae scrubber, phosphate drop from 0.5 to 1 or 2, all the way down to almost undetectable, like 0.01 or something like that. So, do you feed your tanks nori? Um, I do sometimes. Okay. I actually feed them right now. Let me get it. I actually need to drop some in there. I need to get some more food, but I've been feeding some of this flake, flake food and uh, mysis, which is actually kind of going to eat a little bit later. Yeah, tangs, they really need nori, they need greens. Mm -hmm. And if you feed them nori, it keeps their <coughs> immune system, you know, tip top yeah. shape. And they, they do get parasites uh, kind of see that. But yeah, I need to get some more. I don't think it's, that's probably not the best food. No, but it's, uh, I see, I, mean, I see New Life Spectrum has some new veggie pellets. I don't know if you've seen those. Yeah, I mean, honestly, what I do, I just, I go to Walmart and you can just buy like nori in the Asian food yeah. section. I just use that. I, so I use that. I use that yeah. too. <laughs> okay. I also get yeah, also use uh, LRS's. Uh, I use also use LRS's. Uh, yeah. Nori sheets. I like the LRS has a little bit. Uh, what I like about it is that it's a little bit has more higher moisture content. So it wants. I like to fold them. I have one of those uh, innovative marine. Uh, feeders that I keep on the side of my tank all the time and uh, I'll just pop it open and I cut them so they're just the right size by breaking them and if I use a ones they don't want to cut and even I get OCD about making them even so all right. I like to make them a certain size I always have more in my tank for my uh, my tanks all right like I'm a LRS probiotics. I'm so gonna I drop the link in here hop in real quick uh, we're gonna take questions. I guess 15, 15, 20 more minutes or so. I don't wanna hold you all up too long. That's fine. We're just, our wives are, our, our wives are busy at home with the house. Anyway. Oh, they're glad you all got out of there. Well, they, they're, they're tired of hearing us talk about fish. fish. <laughs> Man, that's the problem. I have nobody really talking about fish. Either. That's I'm what you come to, that's what we have, that's why I started the club. So that we can have one, uh, one month, uh, one Sunday afternoon in the month, the guys can get together and mm -hmm. talk about it and keep their wives from driving their wives crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I always tell people. Man, I'm telling you, I'm glad I found it. Yeah. I really, <laughs> I've been here, I was, I've been doing this for you know, a few years now. Right. It's now always fun to have it. somebody else to, mm -hmm. to talk to, or just if you need somebody uh, for a hand, you know, if you need a guy to come over and uh, help you move something or, you know, do something. We are, that's what that's what clubs are about is be able to help each other and uh, get out there. I know you didn't have any or your brother or you got a brother or nobody in the family yeah. really cares about it. Maybe a couple of cousins, but nobody's in salt top line. Or I mean they don't want to come over and help you move a tank, right? Man, <laughs> it took it took me a while to get my cousin over to help get this in. Yeah. And then hang this canopy. Oh man, my wife had to help me with this canopy. Uh when I hung it. Not this part, but I can actually raise it up. Right. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Okay. And that was important to be able to get the skate in. Right. Because oh, yeah. the skate is glued with a uh, uh, stone piece. Okay. So it's one big one big piece. Right. Yeah. Both of them are. So that makes it that can, that's a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> that's yeah. what I tell people. Right, right. A, I always I've had to learn uh, no, I, I learned that um on with me over the years, I've learned to make it so that I can take you out one piece at a time because mm -hmm. you get things like right now. My so Bobby says, You know, my tank's not impressive right now because I had a dang on. I'm try. I do a lot of testing of uh things because mm -hmm. I have friends all in the hobby, all industry friends, products to try out. Well, I tried out this new product, trace element product that. Where I was increasing my coral growth two, three inches every day. Okay. I don't know what that is. Hey, hey, Rico, you, you hear that, man? Okay, this is not something that's out yet. <laughs> okay. As far as the United States, right, goes. right. Okay. What happened with that also, besides that, it made everything else grow. Mm -hmm. So I had some aptasia. Oh. Aptasia grew. Oh. It made okay. my, I had, so, I had a patch of. Uh, green star pollen. Yeah, this was this big. Turn into it took in in a week was all the way over to here. 
uh, it's not so, exclusive, bro. This everybody. <laughs> it, it's it's everything growing, everything growing. So, but I had to almost break my. I've had to break my tank back down again because critters out, all the stuff, all the bad stuff out. I got to get all my aptasia out. Yeah. I got to get all my green star. I took my green star pulp rocks out, yeah. and I put them in bleach. I'm an SPS guy. Okay, yeah. that's junk to me. Right, <laughs> so right. You don't. You don't. I want don't that. want it because what. What will happen is they'll start stinging your corals, mm -hmm. and then once you get a coral stinging together, they're basically dead. It's it's really bad. You'll be lucky to get them come back. That's yeah. what I've found over the years. And so well, I'm, about to, I'm about to take my first dip into it. Yeah, it's, 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 it'll be a it's it'll be a new awakening to you about stability. You know, that's what I tell people. If you don't have your tanks a bit stable, your your alkalinity every day. That's what I do. Yeah. I saw Bobby. Uh, Bobby in my tank. I tested it last night. I tested it every every day. The day before, and last night it was nine point five eight. Okay, when it goes from from eight to nine point five, that means all my corals have a month or two before even any corals will start growing mm -hmm. again. So, so your hands like. It's yeah. like it'll go off crazy and then slow down. Right. You can watch you watch your alkalinity every day. You can also tell if if you get alkalinity that stays stable constantly without if it stays stable constantly, things aren't growing. Okay. Because everything is corals are if they're just there, they're growing, they want to grow. And they're so they're always sucking in the chemicals. And if they're just yeah. nothing's growing. I mean, I want I, I, it, when I was running this, I was I was adding. Uh, I use uh, the Bali method on my tank, and I was ten milliliters a day to my Bali method uh, okay. uh, dosing system to uh, keep up with the alkalinity and calcium in my tank because they were always every day that they would keep growing and growing and growing and because I was keep increasing it. You see, if you're always struggling to keep up at say eight, yeah. seven to eight, then that's a good thing. Okay. okay, that's good because that's telling you corals are growing. What's okay. the most common thing if you notice a flat line? So that's my first time dealing with SPS. Well, the, your the corals world. aren't getting what they need. Okay. They're, not, they're not getting what they need. There either could be movement, it can be, uh, I really don't recommend just just the whole lights on the line. I right. like to keep them pretty much safe. The water movement and chemistry. So you have to worry about the chemistry in your tank. Everything is perfect in it. I always recommend now that we have the capability now of maybe uh, always getting a baseline, maybe every two, three months, mm -hmm. do a baseline ICP test mm -hmm. on your tank. And that way it kind of gives you an idea. Because you never can trust sometimes the, the little, you know, Hannah checkers and everything mm -hmm. else. Because I, I always keep like three or four different brands of, of testing testing equipment on my house because if it gets kind of funky looking to me, then I'll try another test kit. You know, I always got always I'm always always double triple check. Uh, call up a friend, have them come over and use your their test kit. Uh, you know, make sure you're uh, take them to the shop. To, of course, some shops only use a a test yeah, kit. Yeah, yeah. And so I really don't. But if you have a friend in town, you come in and come over and test your tank. Just get an idea, but it generally, uh, if you keep a, if you've got an eight in your tank and it stays that same all the way, your things aren't taking off, and that's the uh, that's a bad thing. And then you have to start figuring out what it is that's causing it. Could be chemistry. They're not the corals aren't getting all the. Uh, all right, hey, 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 quick question. Anybody got any quick questions? Real quick, hey, Rick, I know you on here. Did you see any common question in the chat or something we haven't touched on? Yes. Uh, no, not that I'm I'm aware of. Everybody's just right now listening and uh, absorbing what what's what's being said right now. He sells uh he sells corals and everything. Yeah, what your do you do, you, uh, do frag swaps? You just starting up. Are you? No, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't do frag swaps. Yeah, I don't do frag swaps. I do everything from my home. I don't. I I, I would like to uh, 
I like to stay sane. I like to do it my way. And uh, but yeah, I just started selling corals, uh, shipping corals. But yeah. But yeah, he got a bunch. He's an acro guy. Man. Is he? Yeah. Uh, he's 300 gallon. Yeah. Right. My tank's up. Yeah, on the, my tank's actually up on the on the hangout. If you want to blow it up, but the blue lights are on. Oh, there. is it? Okay. Yeah. Let me see. Yes, yeah, the tank behind him. Uh -huh, right there. It's yeah. hard to see, but man, uh huh. Colony's football size. Yeah, I had, uh, when I had my my tanks in my basement, I had uh, just like this tank here would be one coral. My, I'd have a, I had one tabling colony that was this big. Oh my god! It was just in this tank. Yeah. So I worked on working with just one coral in a tank. <laughs> okay, that's the way I go when I'm, because I'm 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 in the hobby to learn. Okay, right. my my interest in the hobby is learning things. Not my wife said, well, yeah, yeah. well, my main interest in the hobby is because I love to learn things. It's like this, you know why why are things happening? So. I have a lot of friends around the whole world that I've met at Magna, and we get together on Facebook, and we're like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Is this a good thing, bad thing, that kind of thing? That's what you always want to try to think about is why is this happening? Like, he knows what, why is this fish like this, you know? And that's that's why we both feel crazy about Two different areas of the hobby. Yep. <laughs> He's crazy about fish, and I'm crazy about corals. So Bobby's checked out my fish for people that are wondering. Hey, I didn't quarantine. That's right. Is this fish gonna die? Everything's okay right so now. Far, right? So good. far, so good. I could, right. I could oh, add fish oh, well. Oh, I, mean, I, don't any, I don't see any. Uh, <laughs> one thing I, I don't see <laughs> pinched underneath her belly. Yeah. What are you looking fence? for exactly? A few things. A few well, quick things he, you're looking for. I think he, I think he hit it on the head with you, CJ, when he said about the powder blue tang. If there was something going on with the tank, that powder blue tang would have been the first one to let you know and go out the door. Right. Yeah. They go, no, no, those are, like you said, the sword on that powder blue tang is hardly there, you right. know. Yeah. A little yeah. thick slime coat and the powder blues. Now, I've always had trouble with powder, powder uh, I'm risking it right you now. You know, yeah. powder, uh, yes, yes. well, no, it was just, uh, like a fungi, like a oh, white, like a white, like a, like a bacterial yeah. infection on your mouth. Yeah, or, yeah, or just get a slime, a white slime on them. You know, you know. What's they, can be, they can be a little bit sensitive. Yeah, they're they kind of be, sensitive. To that sound. So a lot of times, what happens to so a fish get parasites or worms? A lot of times, they're able to overcome that, but then there will always sometimes be a secondary bacterial infection taking the fish down. Okay. So it's kind of like the immune system can handle the parasite. By sites leave tiny holes, which get infected, bacteria sets in, the immune system is just too much. It overwhelms them. So right. In, in nature, the most I mean, all, all fish have worms in them, I'm pretty sure, pretty much. That's not what you say. They do, but at a much lower concentration. So like when you talk in the ocean, you're talking like a like billion right. gallons right. of water gain. So if the if the parasites of the worms stay at a low level, the immune system can keep up with that. I mean you're dealing with a closed system here. Right. If the number of parasites worms get out of hand, it overwhelms their immune system, and that's what what takes your fish right. down. It's a numbers game, is what it is. What kind of treatment? I mean, and what copper? Like what kind of antibiotic kind of treatments would, would would work for some some certain situations that we run one across? Well, once once you introduce, like right now, I mean, you could do copper. You wouldn't want to, but right. once right. you start doing corals. Right. You're, well, you, so you can use Prozzi Pro okay. in a display tank. That's that's the dewormer. The fish has flutes. That's generally considered reef safe. Um, you can do you can food soak certain medications. Uh, there's an antibiotic called Anaplex. Uh, there's another. It's a dewormer called Metroplex. I heard of Metroplex. And you can use a binder called Seachem Focus to make these medications reef safe. As intestinal worms, internal infection, or even sometimes an external infection, that will help. And then, of course, you've got all the the reef safe, yeah. which are kind of like more herbal remedies that people use. Some people have success, right. some don't. Right. Nobody seems to know what's really in some of those things. So, see you know, fish that uh, maybe may scare us, but it may not really be a serious thing. I mean, not on a fish or something like a cyst or something. I mean, is it? Ignore, I guess. Lymphocystis. Is that so? It's, it's a virus that fish get, and 
it actually you'll see it sometimes like on their tail on their fins it's almost like it looks like a like a white cottony growth and it's the virus that they get and that there's nothing you can do about it except uh these foods you can like soak food in, like cell con zocon yeah. to boost their immune system but that's something that the immune system has to overcome there's no treatment for it yeah it, it only takes a couple of weeks sometimes and it just falls off and goes away um Tank, new tank transfer seems for it to pop up and whatnot. Um, but that's, yeah, like you said, there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, never had it kill a fish or anything. It's just on their fin, and it's like cotton candy, like you said. It's like that thing, thing on your powder blue, right? What's Which that? one of those fish you had had it, had it, had it on? I only had it uh, just on a yellow tank. Yellow tank? Yeah, okay. not the powder blue. Um, I've only, 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 only experienced that with uh, tank transfer from a store or something like that, and uh, that's the only time I've ever seen it pop up, but I've never lost a fish or anything from it. It goes away after a couple weeks, um, and that's about it. I don't know okay. if it's deadly or not. I've never, I've never experienced it. Only if it grows, like if it grows over their gills, yeah. or if it grows over their mouth, which inhibits feeding, then yeah. it could be a problem. Class. But yeah, yeah generally, like he's saying, your um, tail fin or a, or a, or the side fins or something like that might not bother me so much. It's, it's, it's more of a fin thing, yeah. The, it's on the tail fin, some of the other fins, the pectoral fin. You'll see it, but you normally you normally don't even see it on the body usually. <laughs> My yellow tang, his gills breathing harder than anyone else. I'm just wondering. Wow. He's just cool. He's just—he's the boss of the tank, basically. So I'm wondering if he's constantly agitated or is that anything I need to worry about? Well, I noticed going on the yeah. in the powder blue. Yeah. So it could be from that. I mean, he's, he's just riled up. Yeah. yeah, he's riled up from that. Um, but I mean, I'm not saying he has parasites. But generally, when fish do get parasites or worms, they usually go to the gills first. His coat is reduced in composition inside the gills. Okay. So that I mean I'm saying that could be the yeah, first yeah, yeah. place it starts, you know. Okay. A diagnostic tool you can use to check for flukes. Had flukes, you could actually give him a five minute freshwater dip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if he had flukes within the the flukes actually come out of their gills and they turn white in fresh water. Yeah, ROPI temperature control, you want to aerate it for 30 minutes before doing the dip. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's your pH and all that stuff too. Yeah. Well you actually put you have to take a squirt of salt water, mm -hmm. squirt it in there and it will actually raise the pH of really? the water. Yeah. It's a little trick. Hey, yeah, that's some sauce right there. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, because that's one place where you can look at them for flukes. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, I tell you what. I think. Uh, hey, any questions? More questions? Anyone? Anyone got any more questions in the comments? Hey, I think everyone's just writing down stuff right now. That's that's that's, 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 that's cool. I think there was one. Uh, yeah, I think we. I think there was one for uh for him uh. They want to know what, what or somebody wanted to know what's the best SP, uh, SPS corals uh, for a new to, for a new hobbyist that wants to get into it. So easy, I guess. They're asking. They just wanted to hear. <coughs> one of my, you know, one of the ones I always, you know, purple, purple stylo was one of my favorites. Yeah. One of the least ones. A purple stylo is always a great beginner, a hard coral. Um, yeah. Monty Cap is always yeah. a uh, spumanji, uh, the ORA. Or that one goes great. I mean, right now, my tank, all my corals are kind of sucked in. And uh, those corals there, it doesn't hurt them as bad. So if you have your water gets kind of funky sometimes. So I always recommend those corals. But if you get like some like a Walt Disney, of uh, funky on a Walt Disney coral, you've lost three hundred dollars right down the drain overnight. Generally, you know, I'm sure you've had that happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm very seldom so, any acros. I probably have more. I could probably supply everybody at Reef of Palooza with an acro coming in the door. I have tons of acros. You know, but you know, you can have some just uh, dial be overnight. You know, from just oh yeah, stuff yeah. Happening. I mean, yeah. You can. Uh, we were actually talking about that the other day. There's things that goes on with corals, unexplainable. That the whole system is fine, and one decides to check out. 
I try to tell people right. don't take it personal, take it as go ahead. It's jelly happens when uh, when it's not getting what it needs somehow, and then it gets a bacterial infection, and then that uh, uh, there's a fellow uh, Jamie Craig's uh, the unit from the over in the UK that's breeding. Uh, maybe last year, the progression of uh, you know going from an STN, STN event happening. Yeah. He had he had a he had his morals and he actually you could watch the S, STN and it was like you could just watch it just go right up the coral and just turn it white like yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. You know, and uh Pete Craig's he's in uh UK. He's a uh runs a coral lab uh there and he breeds corals it brings them brings them up from they call spats and uh -huh. on the rock and he's bringing yeah. them up from that you know which to me is exciting because we can then start developing corals that are more hardy for the aquarium you know better for used to this up and down chemistry sometimes we get in our tanks you know yeah colorful yeah. more uh, hardy is the main things we want. Hardy and colorful is what everybody wants. We want corals that are look great. And we, we can do anything and we can't kill them. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. my goal, so, right? So with, that, with that being said, tell CJ you need to put those ocean revised on 100% blue, 30, 35% whites, and I'll told you you'll be all right. Yeah, you'll be fine. I, I got told him says, uh, I got them on 90% really, blue. Let me turn them up. Let me turn them up to 100 Yeah, turn them up. <laughs> the you know the blue light is what the corals are using. The, the whites are mainly for our eyes. Yeah, you know. yeah. You don't want to overpower, but that uh, you you want that blue man. Them, them, that ain't gonna them, them lights ain't gonna hurt. That's why CJ and everybody else got them lights. <laughs> well, I'm an I'm an old school kind of guy. I've had uh, I've had radions. I still got my metal headlights. I still got my metal headlights. Yeah, I got metal headlights. I got metal halides on my tank. I'm a metal halide guy. Right. <laughs> metal halide guy, you know. You guys are the same lights. Same lights. Same setting. Yeah, same setting. He's running. I'm a 20k metal halide guy. But then I've had, I've been, I've been running that for so long, you know. You can't go wrong with it. Before that, it's the same, same budget lights. But last, I guess I got one more question. Then we're gonna let him get out of here. Okay. Get the wife back to living room. Um. The order I'm doing this, it may make sense or it may not, is putting my fish in here first, getting my entire stock list in here first, taking my time, letting the bacteria build up and everything, you know, mature, uh -huh. then add corals, corals first, then fish later or adding them both at the same time. Is there anything you notice with any three of those scenarios that's better or worse or means to an end, basically? It's, um, you know, I've never had one way to, I've done it all different kinds of ways and it doesn't make any difference. I don't, I usually don't keep as many fish. I, my little tank, I only got four fish in it right now. But, um, mainly because I'm a coral person, I'm not a big fish person. Right. Um, when I started in the hobby, we, uh, we had nothing but fish, you know. Uh, I had a, I had a, I had a uh, clown trigger that big in a 55 gallon tank. Yeah. <laughs> You know, okay. I'm, in, I'm in yellow tanks. I got a purple tank right now. It's about three times the size of that one. And oh, so that's on here. Yeah. I, I mean, my I'm not. Is, I'm not into this whole thing about. I was gonna. Oh, I was. My plan was to overstock it. No more. No more big fish though. Just you know, smaller yeah. rasses and stuff like that. Uh, you know, these pygmy angels could pick on corals, could not. Yeah. It would be good to have them in there first. Help with coral like a watch, right. like bait on the hook to see if he's gonna take it before. No, they're, like, you know, they're, they're strange because they will maybe maybe they will just, just, yeah. and not maybe the one that you really like. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right, all right. That'll work. Well, hey, everybody, for tuning in, watching me tune my likes. Hobby local local real. For come, I'm gonna go visit some and bring you all some videos for, for Louisville, man. So, okay, hey, I'll take it easy. Bye bye. <laughs> all right, sounds good.
Uh, thanks, Rico.